Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my kitchen. So we are going to tackle a weekly meal prep today and I am trying to get back on the train of doing this. It always makes our weeks go so much smoother whenever I can prep everything as much as possible. So for Monday, we are going to do a marry me chicken with Parmesan potato bites and green beans. And then I also am doing Parmesan radish bites as well, along with the potato bites, which I will be showing you here in a minute. The first thing that I'm doing is just making sure that the potatoes are all washed up and I'm just using these small red potatoes. I know that they go on sale at different times at my grocery store, so I like to grab them whenever they're on sale and they make a great smashed potato, which is a favorite of my family's. This Marry Me chicken recipe is really, really simple. So the first thing that I'm doing is just trimming up the chicken breasts and there were one or two of them that were a bit on the thick side so I went ahead and cut them in half and then I seasoned them with some salt and pepper. Whenever you do chicken like this, you want to make sure that your frying pan gets nice and hot before you lay your chicken into the frying pan. So while the frying pan was heating up, I went ahead and washed up these beautiful radishes. I always think that radishes look so pretty and they remind me a little bit of the Peter Cottontail storybooks for some reason. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is just trimming them off of their leaves and if you have any ideas on how to use radish greens, I would love to hear in the comments, especially if you are from another country and it's a way that you make use of those, let me know. I'd love to know just for the sake of when I buy radishes like this or whenever I get radishes out of the garden. So what I'm doing is just trimming the ends off of these and it helps them to smash out a little bit more like the potatoes. So if you're someone like me that's watching their sugar intake, the radishes is a great alternative and really tastes delicious. My husband who is kind of a picky eater actually really enjoyed the radishes just as much as the potatoes. So definitely give them a try. And if you don't like the flavor of radishes, these don't really have a radish taste. Since you boil the radishes first before you smash them, it really kind of mutes their bitter or hot taste that they can have. So to go along with that, I shredded some Parmesan cheese and we're gonna need that for both the smashed potatoes and radishes and the Mary Me chicken. So I think it's about one third cup for the Mary Me chicken. Don't forget that the recipes will either be typed out in the description box or linked below if they're from another recipe. And then I also smashed up some garlic using my rocking garlic smasher. I really like this thing. It's just easy to clean compared to a lot of other garlic um, mincers. And I really like using this to even mince other things as well. So now that my oil is hot in the pan and I used avocado oil to fry these up, I went ahead and laid about half of the chicken breast pieces in there. And remember we had seasoned them with salt and pepper so they just need to be fried up and cooked really well before we start making the sauce that goes on the Mary Me chicken. So here the potatoes are done being cooked so I could put a fork through them and I just drained them off and now you're gonna see me take a heavy glass or a heavy bottom glass and just smash them out. This is really, really simple and you can actually do like cheddar cheese on top of these as well but I love the flavor of Parmesan cheese and Parmesan cheese can be one of those cheeses since it's so aged that is a little easier on your tummy compared to younger types of cheeses. And then here you're seeing the radishes and you can see once they've been boiled how much color is taken out of them, um, but they are still delicious and kind of give you that potato texture 
um, instead of having the re real potato. So I'm just taking some pink Himalayan salt and sprinkling that over top of the radishes and potatoes and I should have gotten my small oil dispenser out to squirt um, over this because as I was trying to drizzle the avocado oil on these it just a, a lot more dumped out than I expected. So they got a little extra oil but that's okay they still turned out delicious. Once I had the oil on then I sprinkled them with the parm and pop them in the oven. And I put them in the oven at about 400 degrees and I think they were in there for maybe 20 minutes or so, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how melted you want that cheese to be. And you can actually put it under the broiler, which is what I did at the end, just to make the cheese brown up a bit. And then I took some of my home canned green beans, I put them into a pot on the stove with some butter and all you gotta do is heat them up this summer, I plan to show you all how I can green beans. I used to freeze my green beans, but last year, for the first time, I canned them, and I'm not going back. I love having them canned. You can heat them up so quickly. So here, you see I took the chicken out of the pan. I put that minced garlic right into the pan, and then I put some of my home canned chicken broth, which I'm running low on, so expect a video soon showing you how to make chicken broth and beef broth because I'm out of beef broth and I need to make chicken broth soon. So I will be showing you that. And then here I used these smoked sun-dried tomatoes. These are so delicious and have a wonderful flavor. And then I put some heavy cream. If you want to make this more so dairy-free, I realize that it has Parmesan cheese in it. But like I said, some people can eat Parmesan cheese that are mostly dairy-free. Um, you could use canned coconut cream instead of the heavy cream. So here I'm adding in some oregano and once I this hit the pan, a few minutes later, my daughter walked out and said, something smells like pizza. <laughs> so this definitely has a bit of that um, Italian flair to it. So once the sauce had cooked up for a bit, I went ahead and put the chicken breast back in and I put the lid on my skillet and I let this sit for about 10 minutes or so, just really letting the flavors combine. And here you're seeing all of the components of the dinner together and it was delicious. So for Tuesday, we are doing taco salad with a cilantro lime dressing. So I put about two pounds of ground beef into my large frying pan to fry up. And then I also got out my salad spinner and I had gotten this organic romaine lettuce and I'm just cutting that up I'm trying to get away from using as much iceberg lettuce just because I know there is almost no nutritional value in that. I don't know if romaine is any better. It's a little greener, <laughs> so that's my thought process, but um, I'm going to try to use this for our taco salads. We usually would have used the iceberg lettuce. So I love this salad spinner. You all know you've seen me use it a lot of times, and I just love using it for berries and for many other things. And it's got this little button right on the top that is a break for it and it makes it stop spinning when you want it to stop. To store this lettuce, since it was going to go into my meal prep section of my refrigerator, um, I'm just putting a piece of paper towel in the bag with it to help absorb any extra moisture. All right, so now I'm just preparing some of our toppings for the taco salad. I'm cutting up some green onion. I love green onion. I think I say that in almost every single meal prep because I find some place to put it, but I love the flavor of it and I like the color that it brings to dishes and it's kind of an inexpensive, budget-friendly um, piece of your meal and doesn't cost a whole lot. Along with that, I cut up some lime wedges for us to squeeze over our taco salads. And then I just cut some cherry tomatoes into fourths, put them into a container. And as always, I love to shred my own cheese. 
so I went ahead and just shredded this up and I've been doing a lot of minimizing in our home if you all watch my home channel you're gonna be hearing a lot more about just learning to live a bit more minimal than what I have and so I'm debating on getting rid of my food processor I do use it however I don't mind box grating cheese either like I am here so I don't know let me know in the comments if you have a food processor do you feel like it's worth keeping or do you think that it's just something that takes up extra space in your cabinets Okay, you all know me, I'm a healthy thinker. I like to think about healthy food and I don't really like using taco seasoning packets. However, this is one area that um, I compromise because my husband loves whenever I use a taco seasoning packet. He always feels like it tastes so much better than my homemade taco blend. I don't know if it really does or if it's just the thought that it is there. <laughs> so I went ahead and used that, but I do try to buy the ones that have a bit less sodium. Here I am mixing up this dressing. Again, the link will be below. It's really simple. And this is something where I didn't really measure. I did kind of some, kind of some guesstimating, but it just takes some mayo, some sour cream. Here we go, the Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> If you guys have been around for a while, you always know I struggle to say that. In fact, I get funny little memes you guys send me on Instagram about saying that word and everybody always puts their breakdown in the comments of how to say it, but either way, I still struggle. Um, and then it just takes some lime and a few other seasonings and some salt and then you're going to cut up some fresh cilantro to put in with it. And I was really glad we didn't eat this right away because I felt like the cilantro sitting in the dressing in the refrigerator for a day or two um, just helped the flavors to combine. And my husband really liked this dressing as well. So if you want an easy dressing, of course it's not totally dairy-free, but you could use a dairy-free sour cream in place of the regular sour cream and still be able to make it. Meals like this one that take a lot of different components are so incredibly handy to have prepped. It was so nice on Tuesday when we pulled this taco salad out. I could just heat the meat up and we could build our taco salads. Everything was ready to go. Nobody had to wait for dinner and it so happened that that day we needed dinner kind of quickly. So it worked out really, really well. Okay, so now for Wednesday, we are going to be doing a broccoli cheddar soup with turkey melts. So to start out, I'm just cutting up some broccoli florets. And this broccoli soup was so easy. I've made um, quite a few different versions of it. And this one was really, really simple. So I wanted to give it a try. I think it only has a handful of ingredients and it's just very easy to put together. So you could definitely use frozen broccoli for this and I think that oftentimes you can get frozen broccoli for a good price. If, if it goes on sale, I know there's times where you can maybe get it for a dollar a bag. So potentially this soup could be very inexpensive. And I don't know if it's because I grew up with broccoli soup. My mom made broccoli soup quite often when we were younger but I just love it. It's such a comfort food for me. And with this one having such simple ingredients, there is no flour added to this. Um, so it is gluten free. It just feels like a healthy, good meal. And since I'm using my homemade chicken broth in this, it is more of a bone broth and there's a lot of health benefits to that as well. So here I am shredding up the cheddar cheese for this as well. And I just feel like till I washed my food processor, I might as well, you know, 
get out my box grater and it's so much easier to clean up. So I don't know, let me know again if you guys think that I should get rid of my food processor. <laughs> and here I'm just adding some of uh, the minced garlic to the bottom of the pan with a little bit of avocado oil. Here's my homemade chicken broth and I love this. Now that I've made it myself and have used it for a while, it just seems like store-bought broth can't compare because I know all the veggies I used in it and the flavor is just so delicious. Every time I make a soup with it, we all just feel like it's so, it has such good, bold flavor. So here I'm actually crossing over. Um, I'm beginning Thursday's meal prep. And Thursday is going to be quesadilla burgers with a cauliflower salad. And I'm kind of combining two, two meals or two days here because it was just good for my time. And since I was waiting for that broccoli to cook up for Wednesday's meal, I decided to go ahead and mix up my burgers. So if you guys have been to Applebee's, you know they have a quesadilla burger and it's one of my husband's favorites. He really likes it. So I decided this week I am going to figure out how to make these myself. I found a great recipe on Pinterest. I will leave it linked below. And I didn't follow the instructions to a T. <laughs> um, here I'm just adding a lot of Southwest spices, Southwest inspired spices to the burger. I cut some parchment paper just to put between the burgers so I could store them in the refrigerator. I also felt like this is a good idea if you are going to really add some spices and flavor to your burger patties is to let them sit in the refrigerator for a day or two. It will really help the flavors to combine. And a lot of times, you know, we mix up the burger patties and we make them right away. But I know there's times that we've bought pre-made patties in the meat section at the grocery store and we always think their flavors are so good. And I think some of it is because the patties have been made and they've had time to sit and kind of marinate in those spices. So that's kind of the idea I have here. Um, and then I just am showing you the small flour tacos that we are going to use whenever we make these. We'll add in avocado, we'll add in salsa, um, and just make them very Southwest quesadilla E, and then melt them together with the burger inside of those tortillas to get that kind of crunch on the outside and there you have a great quesadilla burger. So here we are back at the broccoli soup and you saw me add in that cream. Again, if you wanted to cut down on the dairy or if you wanna make it dairy free, you could use coconut cream and you could use dairy free um, like cheddar cheese or, or a fake cheddar cheese. Um, to make this soup and that's how easy that soup was. I just put the immersion blender in a little bit and I put it into some containers, put it in the refrigerator and then we just reheated it when we were ready to make that. And then I just made some tur turkey melts with it where we do some roasted red peppers, avocado, turkey, and some cheese in bread and melt it together on the stove. And that and the broccoli soup are just delicious. So here I am making this cauliflower salad and I really enjoy egg salad. We like deviled eggs in our house so I thought we probably would really like this. So you just cook up or steam up some cauliflower florets and then you wanna take and separate the whites and the yolks of the hard boiled eggs and you make kind of the sauce with the egg yolks. So I added some uh, mayo, some dill relish, and some yellow mustard. And the mayo I've been using a lot lately has been Primal Kitchen's avocado mayo. It's just got better oils in it and you're not consuming so much vegetable oil. Just a little kind of review there that we've been really liking that. And then you add in some paprika. I like to use the smoked paprika. And as you're seeing here, I'm also um, adding in some green onion and just smashing it all together. The recipe is below for this. So once you have your kind of sauce made up, you're gonna put that in with the cauliflower and the egg whites, stir it all together, and there you have a cauliflower salad. And I think that this too is going to be a lot more flavorful from getting a good day of sitting in the refrigerator. 
All right, so Friday's meal, I'm not really prepping just because it's a few days, a handful of days away, and it'll be easier for us to do on that day. So I'm going to be doing some chicken thighs, and we actually may put these on our smoker. If I don't do them on the smoker, then I will do them in the oven. I will leave a video link below for the last time I did that to get the skins good and crispy and really make a delicious chicken thigh. And what we like to use with them is my homemade seasoned salt. This is a bit like the Lowry seasoned salt, but I do a version that does not have sugar in it. Um, most all of the seasoned salts have sugar in them and that's what makes them good, but I use an alternative. I will leave the recipe for this in the description box below typed out. So if you want to copy it and paste it to your notes or take a screenshot of it, you can do that. And then to go along with this, I may do some sort of drop biscuit. I will leave a recipe below for one that I like. And then with that, I'm going to do some stuffed little sweet peppers. I'll just use some bacon bits, some cheddar cheese and cream cheese, cut these in half, stuff them and pop them into the oven um, at 400 degrees for probably, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. I'll check them and see how soft they are. And we'll have some like poppers that aren't hot. I know a lot of times people make jalapeno poppers, but these will be a sweet version so that um, our kids will like them as well. So I have, I just got these out of the freezer. So this is your little memo. If you are making things this week that you need to grab things out of the freezer, go ahead and do that so you don't forget. And then you will end up with a throw together meal instead of something that is planned out, which is the ideal situation with meal prepping. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope this video inspired you. I hope that you get ideas for your week this week. Let me know in the comments any good meal ideas you have, any meal inspiration. I'm always looking for more ideas. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Give this video a like. Put that bell notification on so you don't miss any videos that I have coming up. I'm going to be posting a lot more frequently and I will see you guys in my next video.